This video is going to serve to teach you what measurements are actually important on your longboard, how to measure them, and maybe some misconceptions, misunderstandings, or just different ways of thinking about the different lengths of our board. You know, a lot of us don't have the luxury of going in person, standing on boards, buying a deck that you've touched and felt. A lot of us have to purchase blind. A lot of us don't have vibrant crews of downhill skateboarders where you can go try a ton of gear before you go buy it yourself. So hopefully this video helps give you a better idea of just the, the spatial awareness of these different measurements. So one of the first misunderstandings that I want to dispel is that the length of the board is important. Uh, I think that's a misconception. Um, this might stem from a lot of people that are familiar with the snowboard and uh, ski industry, um, even surfing. The length of your board is often recommended to be proportional to your size. You can't choose a long board based on the same principles, at least not the length. What you want to focus on is the wheelbase. And the wheelbase is a lot more up to your preferences than it is up to your body geometry. This really helped my last video, so I'm gonna do it once again. Uh, like the video if you get distracted and you wanna watch something else, but then come back to this. Uh, long YouTube videos are hard to get through sometimes. I get it, I talk a lot, I nerd out. So if you like the video now, YouTube will show it to you later. Uh, and then also subscribe. I like nerding out about longboard gear. I love doing gear reviews. Uh, and if you have suggestions for products you want to see, stuff like that, let me know. Uh, I'm pretty chock full of wheels right now. I've got a lot of wheel reviews in the pipeline, but I'm always interested in hearing what gear that you guys are hyped about. So leave a like, subscribe, and be here for the next content we make. Now the wheelbase is measured from the inner mounting bolts to the inner mounting bolts. So from here to here. When I'm online shopping for a longboard deck, I know that when it says a 22 inch wheelbase, that means the deck's innermost mounting holes are, you know, 22 inches apart. That's important because that dictates how far away my trucks are from one another and that changes the turning radius of the board. Now, something really interesting is that the wheelbase of your deck does not mean that your trucks are gonna have the same true wheelbase. So what do I mean by true wheelbase? True wheelbase is the actual measurement from your axle to your axle. And that measurement is almost always going to be longer than the wheelbase listed on your deck. The wheelbase is actually one and a half inches longer on these 43 degree Paris Savants uh, than this board. So if I'm rocking a 25 inch wheelbase right now, then I know that these trucks are gonna be 26 and a half inches apart. Now, not all trucks have the same true wheelbase offset. Uh, the way to measure that would be measuring your axle to axle distance and then subtracting the wheelbase you're using on your deck, so that inner bolt measurement. Uh, on this board with the um, downhill sibens, uh, these trucks add a lot to your true wheelbase, whereas the Paris just added an inch and a half. These add two and a half inches and potentially even more based on the way that you utilize the mounting holes. Lots of trucks have multiple mounting holes. Uh, this has eight mounting holes. And what that lets you do is mount your truck in incrementally different positions on the board. So even if my deck doesn't have multiple mounting holes, I can still fine tune my wheelbase based on where I'm putting the trucks. These trucks have a two and a half inch add on to the wheelbase of the deck, which means that this 22 inch wheelbase is going to be at 24 and a half inches. If I put my Paris on here, it's going to be 23 and a half inches. So if I wanted to do an objective comparison, if I wanted to do a good job being a good little scientist, then I'm going to use, you know, the 22 and a half inch wheelbase when I'm testing these trucks. And I'm going to use the 23 and a half inch wheelbase when I'm testing the Paris because that true wheelbase that axle to axle measurement is gonna be identical. And that's what actually affects your stability, your turning radius, the way you leverage your trucks. Now I brought up these trucks with multiple mounting holes. Uh, you'll find them in Rogues, Don't Trips, uh, Bears, even their cast trucks have it all the way up to the Smokies. Uh, the spacing that you're gonna find on these is always plus or minus three eighths of an inch. 
So that means if I set up my trucks in like a neutral position, I know that I can expand my front truck, or at least just one of my trucks, it could be the front, it could be the back, I can move that out or in 3 eighths of an inch. So another measurement that you want to pay attention to is the width of your board. Now, because all of our boards have such drastically different shapes, you can't assume that a 9 inch board uh, from one manufacturer or from one model is going to be the same under your feet as a 9 inch board from a different company. Uh, there's a couple things that change that. Um, for one, just not even mathematically, just by feel, a flat 9 inch wide board is going to feel wider than a 9 inch board that has a lot of concave. And you'll notice that a lot of narrow boards have really flat concaves. And that's maybe a discussion uh, for another video of why certain concave trends are popular right now. But the width of your deck is different throughout the whole length of the board sometimes. Now, if the width of the board is wider at the front truck, if it's wider up here, and narrower at the back, we call that shape of longboard a tapered longboard. Some riders might like that because they like to use the rail of their board for toe side slides, toe side cornering for that extra leverage, and having that foot closer into the back truck while still being able to access the rail is a feeling that they like. Now, for those who don't know that what rails are, uh, it's like snowboarding, the rails of your board are just the edges. On most boards, the rails are not different or special. Uh, they don't constitute like some unique construction or special part of the board like maybe a snowboard would have. Um, but it's just what we use to describe the edges of the board. And they're pretty important for the way that we control our deck. Uh, on this board, the board looks to be an even 9 inches all the way through when the manufacturer puts the specs on their boards and you know distributes those to skate shops, they say that this board is nine inches. But when I actually measure it, I actually get a narrower size at both my front foot placement and my back foot placement. I'm getting around eight and three quarters for both of those, which means that maybe if I were to go to an eight and three quarter inch deck, or at least one that had a similar standing platform, I would feel right at home doing that transition. I can't get it stuck in my head that, oh, the smallest board that I can ride is nine inches, because even though this deck is nine inches, the standing platform is smaller than that and I'm comfortable on it. So be conscious of the width of your board and how that's gonna compare to other boards of different shapes. Now, I think the last thing that I wanna say uh, in this video about measurements, about the edges of our board, uh, these things that are important for setting up a board and knowing how a board feels to you. Um, this is probably the best video that this is going to fit in, but rail match is a lie. Uh, what do I mean by rail match? I mean the edges of your wheels lining up with the edge of your board. A lot of riders strive to have perfect rail match on their setups, and that spawned from you know, the 2019 craze to start riding smaller, narrower downhill boards, a lot of people began realizing that the narrower your trucks are, the, you know, maybe more braking force you get, the better cornering performance, uh, the better leverage you get over your wheels, so you can really squash them into the pavement and get all of the traction that they have available. Um, that's not because their wheels were like rail matching with the deck, they came to that conclusion just because that's a property of narrower trucks. Somewhere along the way, people got it in their mind that having perfect rail match means that your board is going to perform perfectly. Uh, it really doesn't matter as much as people think it does. And <laughs> shit. It doesn't matter as much as people think it does. And if your board isn't perfectly rail matched, your performance isn't going to be greatly changed. I intentionally don't rail match on some of my setups because I like the way that board slides and carves and corners when the wheels actually poke out farther or when the wheels are further under the board. So don't be so worried about rail matching on your setups, making those lips of the wheels align with the edge of the board. It's worth experimenting with both feelings of the wheels being under it and outside of it. So that's all for this video about different measurements on your board, how they add up, and what's important. Remember, your true wheelbase is different than the wheelbase of the deck. The length of your board doesn't matter, and the width of your board, that maximum widest point, 
might be different than where you actually stand. So I hope you take those with you. You can make more educated decisions about buying decks, especially blindly online. And if you have any more questions or need refreshers on terminology, something I said that I took for granted uh, its definition, but maybe you don't know its definition, let me know in the comments. I respond pretty quickly. And hopefully your question is going to answer somebody else's, even if it's tangentially related. I appreciate you all so very much, and I hope you have a great day.